The Fire Nation, an isolated kingdom under the monarchy of the Fire Lord, home to the notorious Firebenders. Though the nation has turned out heroes like Fire Lord Zuko and General Iroh, they are perhaps most infamous for the villains they produced. Sometime during the Hundred Year War, a young boy with a unique talent was born to the Fire Nation. As a child, he discovered he was a powerful firebender, a champion in Agni Kai, a traditional dueling arena. His talent for firebending extended past the conventional, not only manipulating fire, but the energy of explosions. But this young boy was perhaps too confident in his abilities. At some point in his adolescence, he blew off his arm and leg. He would go on to survive the ordeal, replacing his limbs with metallic prosthetics. As an adult, he became a nameless bounty hunter, ruthless and savage, completing any job without question. During the return of the last airbender, he was commissioned by Prince Zuko to eliminate the boy Avatar. Avatar Aang and his friends, particularly Sokka, would eventually nickname the bounty hunter Combustion Man. For weeks, Combustion Man made several attempts on the Avatar's life. But at the Western Air Temple, after nearly completing his task, he inadvertently took his own life, his greatest power working against him. Years later, another unique bender was born to the Fire Nation. Much like the Combustion Man before her, the young girl named Pali would also discover her powers at a young age. Unlike her predecessor, she did not forge the path of her early life. Shortly after discovering her powers, a warlord kidnapped her, molding her into a weapon for his own devices. But Pali was saved by a young man named Zahir, an idealist who opposed authority and oppressive establishments. Quickly, Pali became enamored with Zahir's ideals and with the young man himself. As a prisoner to a warlord, she too desired the end of tyrannical rule. Together, Zahir and Pali joined the Red Lotus, meaning Minghua, the waterbender, and Gazan, the lava bender, fighting to bring down the government of the world. When their attention turned to the new avatar, Korra, they were stopped. For 13 years, Pali and her friends were separated and imprisoned. But on the 13th year, with the help of Zahir and the Red Lotus, she would escape. They continued their mission as they did before, bringing down the nations of the world, as well as the Avatar. They would succeed in assassinating the Earth Queen, though they failed to destroy Avatar Korra. On Lahima's peak, while capturing the Avatar, Pali lost her life in battle. Much like the Combustion Man, she too was brought down by her own power. For this video, I will be examining these characters at their primes. For Combustion Man, this will be The Last Airbender, Book 3. For Pali, this will be The Legend of Korra, Book 3. When comparing the physical attributes of these two, it's clearly a battle between strength and speed. Though Pali was a very tall woman, standing over 6 feet tall, Combustion Man was around the same height, with a lot more mass. Not to mention, the foundation of his already bulky physique is backed up by his metal prosthetics, which enabled him to withstand bending attacks and falls from great distances. Pali's answer to Combustion Man's fortitude is her speed, able to evade the attacks of Su Yin and Lin Bei Fong. This will play in direct contrast to Combustion Man's fighting style, which was very stagnant and strong, much like an earthbender. Like any battle between brawn and agility, it comes down to stamina. For the brute, it comes down to being able to land a blow before tiring out. All it takes is one good right hook or a suffocating bear hug. For the light-footed, it comes down to being able to evade without being hit. When considering Combustion Man versus Pali, a physical assessment is circumstantial. It's just as likely for Combustion Man to land a blow as it is for Pali to evade and tire him out in a purely physical bout. For this round, there will be no edge given for their physical abilities. Firebending was the element of power and energy. Unlike water, earth, and airbending, firebending came directly from one's chi instead of an existing element. Besides flames, firebenders could also manipulate the energy of lightning and combustions. Though neither opponent knows how to produce or redirect lightning, they were skilled with standard firebending and combustion bending. 
Outside of one showing from Combustion Man, where he burns a letter in his hand, we have never seen him use firebending in combat. However, he did build his reputation by way of Agni Kai. And in the context of the firebending dueling arena, blowing up your opponent is generally not allowed. So we can assume he was at least competent with his firebending skills. Be that as it may, his focus was on combustion bending and he was quite powerful with it, overwhelming the defensive efforts of Katara and Toph in his first encounter with Team Avatar. His combustion bending was also strong enough to break through rock and overwhelm the defenses of Zuko. Yet, he was eventually undermined by the precision of Toph's rock and Sokka's boomerang. While Poli did not have as much power as Combustion Man, she made up for it with variety, precision, and control. Poli displayed more integration with firebending, using it to repel Zuko's dragon Druk and Mako's firebending attacks during her covert mission in Zaofu. But what is more impressive is her control of combustion bending. Not only was she capable of creating substantial explosions, but she was also able to curve her blast, though at the sacrifice of precision. As stated, Combustion Man has displayed greater power, but this would only be an advantage with regards to environmental manipulation or a head-to-head -head confrontation. If either Combustion Man or Pali landed a hit, they would both be equally dead. The thing to examine here is who would hit who first. And with this, I side with Pali. She would be fast enough to pin down Combustion Man with her frontal and curved bending. And if the fight came to close range, I favor her showings with fire bending. Combustion Man can wreak havoc, but Pali is more likely to subvert his efforts. Pali gets the edge for her bending abilities. When looking at their tactical abilities, we will have to delve in the world of speculation. But based on their fighting styles and personal philosophies, we should be able to lock something down. Combustion Man, as a bounty hunter, usually avoided direct confrontation, not because he was incapable, but because he preferred a low profile. But once he did engage in one-to-one -one confrontations, he was a bit straightforward, pushing through with his brute strength or his explosive power. Within the Red Lotus, in a combative sense, Pali was the backbone of the team, fighting from afar or within the center of the group as her squad mates covered her flanks. This is highlighted within the skirmishes of Zafu, the Northern Air Temple, and Lahima's Peak. And in close combat, she was capable of pinning her foes down while staying evasive. When comparing the two, if they met each other head up, she would be capable of evading and getting off more shots than Combustion Man could. That, coupled with Combustion Man's less dynamic fighting style, would give Pali the edge for her tactical abilities. Let's set up this fight. Let's say it takes place in the streets of Republic City. As a final tally, I would say the advantage to the victor goes 8 to 10. The following is a hypothetical battle of one majority victory. Let's say the opponents stand 50 yards away from each other. As was typical of their fighting styles, they would open up with combustion bending. When looking at the speed of their explosions, they were relatively on par so the match would probably not end by way of a quick draw. However, if their explosions did meet head to head, Combustion Man would probably hold an advantage, pushing Pali away and possibly doing damage to her from the fallout. In these scenarios, I see Combustion Man continuing his advantage and possibly pinning Pali down for a quick win. However, I find it more likely for Pali to recover and dodge Combustion Man's attacks, much like she did against Lin and Su Yan Beifang. Knowing she could not break through Combustion Man with a direct assault, she would likely blow out a building, generating cover or creating a distraction. In any case, she would devise an advantage, using her curved combustion bending to eventually hit and end Combustion Man. However, it is possible for Combustion Man to get out of the situation, tanking the building debris, closing the distance, attempting to utilize a close range advantage, whether by way of his physicality or his combustion bending. Though at close proximity, Pali has her own defenses with firebending. That all said, I see this fight ending somewhere in the mid-range battle more often than not. 
The fight would not likely be a one-shot, nor would it likely be a war of attrition. Pali would likely use her more dynamic use of firebending and combustion bending, coupled with her tactical abilities, to win a comfortable majority in the mid-range battle. And thus, I declare Pali, the Sparky Sparky Boo Man, the victor. Of course, this is all my opinion based on the lore of the Avatar universe. Do you think Pali would win a majority? Or do you believe Combustion Man is more likely the victor? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, peace, love, and remember, be water my friends. The question still stands. Who was the better Avatar? I like it. Oh my god, I like airbending a lot. Oh god, I like it. It can be debated that Sora packed more punch than Aang. This is definitely the case at close range, though a little- God damn it, I thought I told you to mute. Y'all talk a lot on this Facebook group. All right, let's mute it again. Mute for one hour.